This video is sponsored by Skillshare. The first thousand people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Marvin Gaye was one of the best in the world at what he did. And what he did was sing songs about love. Throughout the 1960s, Gaye rose to fame as one of Motown Records' biggest stars. By 1969, he had cracked the US R&B Top 10 charts 25 times, and even topped the pop charts with I Heard It Through the Grapevine. His delicate voice was perfect for singing about romance and heartbreak, and he became one of the most important cogs in the musical machine that was Motown Records. But while Gay's career was taking off, his life and the world around him were falling apart. For Marvin Gaye, fame brought with it a deep depression and a serious addiction to cocaine. On top of this, Gay's career took a shocking turn in 1967, when his singing partner Tammy Terrell collapsed on stage from a brain tumor. She would die three years later. And as Gay was dealing with this personal trauma, his country was going through trauma as well. The Vietnam War loomed over a generation of youth, and Black America's civil rights movement was being met with violent resistance at every turn. In 1965, the movement lost one of its greatest leaders in Malcolm X, and then three years later, Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated as well. A year after that, the FBI broke into activist Fred Hampton's house at four in the morning and murdered him in his sleep. This hatred and violence had an effect on Marvin Gaye. What was a singer supposed to do in the face of such pain and injustice? How could you sing love songs when the government was violently repressing its own people? As early as 1965, Gay was starting to question his role as a musician and public figure. He told his biographer that these thoughts came as a result of seeing LA's Watts riots. My stomach got real tight and my heart started beating like crazy. I wanted to throw the radio down and burn all the bullshit songs I'd been singing and get out there and kick ass with the rest of the brothers. I wondered to myself, with the world exploding around me, how am I supposed to keep singing love songs? But Barry Gordy, who ran Motown Records with an iron fist, had a strict policy against artists taking political stances. And so it wasn't until 1971 that Marvin Gaye was finally able to speak out against the injustices that he saw in the world. But when Gaye finally did speak out, it changed music forever. On May 21st, 1971, 50 years ago today, Marvin Gaye released a pure protest album that captured the sentiment of the day, and an album with lessons we can still learn from 50 years onwards. That album was called What's going on? The genesis for What's Going On as an album came from its titular lead single. That song was originally written by Obi Benson of The Four Tops. He wrote it after witnessing police dressed in riot gear who were obscuring badges and assaulting students in Berkeley, California. Benson told Ben Edmonds about his reaction to this scene. I saw this and started wondering what the fuck was going on. What is happening here? One question led to another. Why are they sending kids so far from their families overseas? Why are they attacking their own children in the streets here? Benson took that question and turned it into a song, but the Four Tops refused to record it thanks to Motown's policy on politics. But Benson knew he had something, so when his band members turned down his song, he brought it to Marvin Gaye. The lyrics were perfect for an artist who was looking to say something about the world. War is not the answer, for only love can conquer hate. They were filled with a pacifist tilt, talking about the Vietnam War, but hinted at everything else going on as well. Don't punish me with brutality. And even though Gordy insisted that Motown should be apolitical, Gay went about and recorded the song anyways. That recording session was filled with spontaneous creativity. The Eli Fontaine sax solo that opened the song was just Fontaine improvising and loosening up before recording. It was serendipity that gave the song its iconic vocals too, with several vocal takes layered over one another. This came about because Gay wanted to listen to two different vocal takes to hear which was better. Engineer Ken Sands put one on each side of the stereo mix so they could be compared in real time, but Gay loved the sound of them together, and so he decided to keep it, adding multiple vocal layers throughout the choruses of the song. 
The energy and freedom comes through in the sessions, with chatter between Gay's friends making it into the mix as well. Altogether, the song is vibrant and lush. You can hear Gay coming to life as he's finally able to get his catharsis, speaking out against the evils in the world. Bring some understanding here today. Oh. But when Gay brought the recording to Gordy, he was shot down. In Frankie Gay's memoir, he recalls a phone call with his brother, where Marvin vented about Barry Gordy. Barry hates my music. He doesn't want to record it because he doesn't think it will sell. He may be right about that, but I don't care. I just want to be heard, and that's all that matters. But even as Gordy was shutting down the song, other powers at the label worked in secret to get it released. And in January 1971, to the surprise of both Gay and Barry Gordy, What's Going On hit record stores. It immediately proved Gordy wrong. Not only did What's Going On sell, it became the fastest selling single Motown had ever seen, moving more than 70,000 copies in its first week. And that's because what's going on struck a vein with people all across America, who were asking themselves that exact same question. With the success of the single, the tables turned. Barry Gordy came to Marvin Gaye and asked him for an album to follow it up. With the ball entirely in his court, Gaye bargained for complete creative control. Barry's only stipulation was that the album needed to be completed by the end of March. So with carte blanche, Marvin Gaye went about making the protest album that he had dreamed of making. The recording sessions for What's Going On were unorthodox. Gay and his team would work 12-hour days, bring friends into the studio, and go through prodigious amounts of scotch. And Gay looked beyond Motown's typical roster of musicians and songwriters. Mercy Me featured a sax solo from the early rock saxophonist Wild Bill Moore, and Motown's elevator operator, James Nix, helped contribute lyrics to three songs on the album. It was a far cry from the assembly line process that had defined Motown up until that point. The result is music that's loose and groovy, with a warm sound that would define R&B in the early 70s. Lyrically, the album is a broad protest album that talks about all of the issues that Gay saw in his day. When he first pitched the album to Gordy, Marvin Gaye described it as protesting Vietnam, police brutality, social conditions, a lot of stuff and song by song, Gay addresses all of these. The second track on the album is What's Happening, Brother, written from the perspective of a Vietnam veteran who comes home to find his country in tatters. I'm just getting back, but you knew I would. The character finds that the country he left has changed, and that he no longer has a place in it. He can't get a job, and the culture has moved at such a pace that he can't keep up. Say, man, I just don't understand what's going on. These experiences were inspired by the true story of Marvin Gaye's brother, Frankie, who fought in Vietnam for three years. But it wasn't just Frankie Gaye's experience. Countless young men throughout the 1960s were drafted into an imperialistic war, went through hellish trauma, and returned to a country that fundamentally did not care for them, especially if they were black. While the protests against the Vietnam War were very much rooted in their time, much of the rest of the album is just as relevant today. We live in an age of police brutality, ecological disaster, and systemic apathy where millions are left behind by the governments meant to protect and aid them. The third song on What's Going On is Flying High in the Friendly Sky, a raw portrait of Gay's own struggles with addiction. Well, I go to the place where good feeling awaits me. Fifty years later, addiction remains an epidemic in much of North America today. Throughout the 2010s, the prescription opioid crisis ravaged communities that were already impoverished by the 2008 financial crisis. It's these kinds of systemic issues that can make us feel despondent about the world, a feeling that Gay captures in the next song, Save the Children. Just want to ask a question. Who really cares to save a world in despair? What's Going On even features a song of environmental protest, Mercy, Mercy Me, The Ecology. In this song in particular, Gay was ahead of his time, predicting the environmental concerns that loom over generations of youth today. Oil wasted on the oceans and upon our seas, fish full of mercury. 
but the most relevant song of all might be the last song of the album, Inner City Blues Make Me Wanna Holler. Inner City Blues is about the economic disenfranchisement of the lower classes, people forced to work long hours for low pay and denied access to basic human rights like housing and healthcare. The Apollo program of the 1960s and the moon landing were great triumphs for humanity, but they rang hollow to a generation of black Americans struggling to put food on the table. 50 years later, tech billionaires are shooting for Mars while people starve in the streets and cities burn from climate change, choosing to dream of sci-fi futures in space rather than address the real, tangible problems here on Earth. Gay discusses one of the biggest of those problems in the fourth verse. The over-policing of poor communities has a long history in the United States. It was one of the defining struggles that Marvin Gaye faced, and it has only increased with the growth of America's prison industrial complex. Fifty years onwards, these words probably resonate more than any others on the album, as we sit in the midst of a historic movement against police brutality. When faced with all the same problems, Marvin Gaye looked back to his early career and looked to the force that had driven him to stardom, love. But Gaye didn't mean a simple romantic love. For him, love meant a love of his god, a love of the planet he lived on, and most of all, a true, grand love for all of humankind. In Right On, Gaye sings about the power that love can have to bring people together. But what does love for your fellow man really mean in the modern world? I don't think it simply means being nice to people, respecting people. I think that love for your fellow man means something greater. It means understanding that there are certain rights that everybody is entitled to. It means knowing that people deserve clean water, healthy food in their bellies, roofs above their head, and fair pay for fair work. And it means being willing to push for these changes on a systemic level, even if that means your life might personally change. In Marvin Gaye's case, it meant pushing against a label that told him not to get political. Love meant using his platform to raise awareness and to fight for causes he believed in. What's going on was a massive risk for Marvin Gaye, but it paid dividends. Not only did the album sell, but it also changed perspectives of what soul music could be. Suddenly, people started to look to Motown for the kind of culture-shifting records that rock and roll had produced over the last decade. In the wake of Marvin Gaye, more Motown and soul artists like Stevie Wonder began to use their platform to speak out, creating ambitious works of auteurship in the example that Gaye set. And even today, the influence of the album can still be felt. Marvin Gaye's ethos lives on through the current generation of conscious hip-hop artists like Kendrick Lamar, Vince Staples, and Killer Mike. And in 2020, when Rolling Stone updated their list of the 500 greatest albums of all time, they placed What's Going On at the very top. What's Going On didn't solve the issues of its day, but it helped bring awareness to them and helped set a new standard for how musicians can fight them. And today, 50 years onwards, I think that what's going on merits re-listening and reflection. The dreams of Marvin Gaye may feel far off, but with a new generation of youth standing up and fighting for what they believe in, perhaps we will finally be able to find the love that Marvin Gaye was looking for half a century ago. With What's Going On, Marvin Gaye proved the power that art has as a tool to push for social change. If that's the sort of thing that you dream of someday doing, you should check out Nicholas Smith's course, Artivism, Create Inspiring Art for Change. In that class, Smith will teach you some fundamental art skills that you can learn to try to help push for the change that you want to see in the world. 
Skillshare is the online learning community for creators and professionals of all walks of life. And they've also been a longtime supporter of this channel, helping me to get where I am today. If you want to show your support for my channel, a great way to do so is to sign up to Skillshare with the link in the description. The first thousand people to click that link will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. That means you'll be able to take Andy Pizza's class, Find Your Style, which will teach you how to find and hone your own unique creative voice. And there's thousands of courses beyond that on everything from web development to video editing to cooking. So why not give it a shot today? Following the link in the description will get you a free trial, and it'll also show Skillshare that I sent you, which really goes a long way to help my channel. So thank you all so much for watching.